Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at something very unique, very special, very interesting. I don't really know a whole lot about the backstory of these, but these are a couple of kits from uh, a good smile company's Modroid line. I haven't built one for a long time. I think the only Modroid kit that I've built actually is the Strelitzia, which was a little while back. So I'm looking forward to getting another chance to try out another Modroid kit. But these two kits are from Obsolete, which I guess was like a YouTube's original series. I've not watched it, don't really know much of anything about it, except for the fact that these look like some pretty cool mecha designs. Uh, in 135th scale kits that you can build here from Good Smile Company, so we're going to check them out in separate videos. I want to first take a look at one today, and then we'll take a look at the other one next. So the first one we're going to be taking a look here at here today is going to be the 135th scale U.S. Marine Corps AREX03 Toad. So with these being 135th scale and sort of like uh, manned machines like that, it's not going to be a very big kit, I don't think. Probably about the same size as like a high grade. Gundam, I suppose, something like that. But as you can see, I mean, it's a fairly good sized box, very thin though. Let's just go ahead and take a look around the box here, see what we can see. So we got some cool box art here on the front with the illustration of the mecha suit there. Very interesting design for these. Once again, this is 135th scale. We got some general information over here, affiliation US Marine Corps, height, basically 2.8 meters, so almost three meters tall. And then it's armaments there around on the side of the box. Just a look at the mecha there once again on the top, just the obsolete logo there. Over here, it looks like what we got for the sample build is one that is like just slightly weathered, I think, just straight out of the box. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's fully painted, but it does look like it has like some lining and a little bit of painting on it, maybe. It looks like it's got a sort of beam saber sort of weapon there and a kind of assault rifle machine gun sort of thing there you can see like there's the armor parts off of just like the main frame there and it does have a pilot which is going to be seating it inside there and over here just again illustration front and back what that's going to look like i'm wondering if this is going to include decals i hope so you've got the xo rifle and then i love how this tactical torch basically looks like a cigarette <laughs> that's pretty funny let's go ahead and pop it open i love how the modroid boxes are always so strange they're not uniform at all and so it looks like basically what you got in here is like one big runner in tan and one smaller runner in gray and the instructions that's it so it's going to be very simple in terms of actually the number of parts and everything on the instruction manual here once again just illustrations of the mecha the weapons the pilot there how to put on water slides so i guess it does include water slides where are they Aha, they're located inside hiding. Okay, we'll take a look at those in a moment. We do also have the parts list here pretty briefly and then just on into the construction. So you build up your pilot figure first and then kind of build the body around that, all of the frame, all like the exo frame. So it's got it kind of color separated. Just the main exo frame is in gray and then all the other one parts. So I guess that's the colors. So you know exactly which runner they're from. You got gray parts and tan parts then all the tan parts, building that up around that, building the weapons parts and everything. Uh, putting the pilot in there. So pretty straightforward. I mean, it's going to be an uh, interesting kit. Not exactly like building a Bandai Gunpla kit, that's for sure. Let's take a peek at what we got here for the water slide decals. Pretty small little sheet here, but it looks like it got some cool markings. So there you go. They're kind of mostly in black, but these look like sort of dark grayish sort of for these uh, markings there. So pretty cool. And some black ones there in the 51 logo there in black as well so not a lot but a few there so that's kind of nice so our a runner here is the runner here in tan and it is uh labeled specifically for the u.s marine corps exo frame kit here and you can see there's some really fine details on some of these like little parts that are going to be going around there we do have our like marine corps pilot figure over here on the side as well and our little cute hands for it and everything so a lot of really nice little details on those parts and then the X runner is our runner here in gray for all of basically like the exo frames. I'm guessing that's why they labeled it X. And we do have a pilot figure here. So I was noticing that in the manual, the pilot figure is like a, a girl, female there for building in the frame. And then you switch it out for the uh, Marine Corps version, I guess, later on. But you do have a choice there. So I think you probably could just leave it as the female pilot there if you wanted to. So let me go ahead and get this built up and then we'll see how it goes. So here it is all put together and it is a tiny little thing, but it is really nice. It's really, there's a lot of detail there and a lot of detail that could be enhanced as well too. I mean, like you have little areas where you could, I think just if you have a little tiny drill, you could enhance that with adding some more little details in there, adding some like wire antennas on the top there. I'll show you some more details about that here in a minute. But 
Uh, while there's a lot of detail on there, I think if you wanted to make this even more detailed, you could very easily do that, which will be very cool to see. That said, there is not too much in the way of seam lines on this kit either, so that's good. The articulation is also pretty good on this. It's got some nice points of articulation, which we'll go over here in a minute. And so overall, I think it's a pretty awesome kit. Now, does it match the price tag? I'm not sure, but let's have a look. So I mentioned about a couple of seam lines, and basically those are going to be here on the shoulder. There's a front and back piece of that with a seam down the middle, which is kind of, you know, not really on a kit like this. I feel like that's not really a big deal. It kind of just goes in with the design. And then here on the front as well, like this middle section, there's a seam like kind of between these two parts. But again, just because of the design of that, I feel like you can very easily just write that off as just an actual uh, seam line between two like pieces of the armor and not really need to worry about removing that with glue or anything like that. You also have one here on this bicep part and it's kind of the same thing for that one as well. I think you could very easily just kind of not worry too much about those. As for the articulation here, uh, also I should mention that I didn't glue anything on this yet. Uh, it does recommend you to glue some, especially some of the smaller parts in and I would definitely do that before painting but just for the time being I haven't glued anything on this quite yet. So some of these small parts uh, you do want to be a little bit careful with. So the head will rotate side to side there a little bit. And the articulation of this is kind of interesting how this like top part here is like the chest and this like main kind of body part is sort of just like a static part in the middle of everything that kind of like moves around that. So you have some forward and back articulation there. Uh, the shoulder will move forward and back here. Also, it will move up and down at its connection like uh, inside of there. Then you also have some rotation here at the end of the arm, but just because of the shoulder armor, that's kind of going to be like the extent of how high you can raise the arm, I think. Let me see. Yeah, about like that looks to be about the extent of that, unfortunately. This flap here on the side will move up and down a little bit. Uh, the elbow also will move up like that to a little bit more than 90 degrees like that. And then the hand is just pegged on there, so that will just rotate around side to side, basically. So pretty simple for that. These little flaps on the front here will move forward and back. Back around here on the back side, this part will open up and our pilot figure is inside there. So there's that, and then again, I haven't glued this together or anything yet, uh, so you really need to glue that together, and that just fits right inside there. You can also open this hatch here on the top, and here you'll notice, for example, a hole that's on there where you could easily just stick a bit of wire, brass wire or something like that, for an antenna detail to add to this. This hatch here also opens up. It's a little bit tricky to get at it. I might uh, use a knife to help me pop that open, but there you go, you can open that up like that and then your little dudes down inside of there this part on the underside of here this like wheel bit moves out and i guess that's for like uh, some uh, other mode of this like going around on the wheels but again i've not seen the anime so i'm not exactly sure how that works unfortunately but the legs will come out to the side to about there like that and then we'll rotate forward and back of course then we've got a knee bend here which will give you a very full knee bend there like that and then this foot will also let me see it will rotate side to side the front part of the foot there will rotate side to side and you can also bend that up and down there as well so you can see the articulation of this is actually not too bad i mean for such a tiny little kit i mean the articulation of it is going to be quite impressive now as for like putting this up onto any sort of like action base or something if you wanted to do like a jumping or flying pose or something there's nowhere to plug an action base adapter onto this but of course you could sort something out with just uh, again just a piece of black uh, glass uh, with just a piece of brass rod or something or aluminum rod you just uh, just drill like a little two millimeter hole and then just use like a piece of two millimeter rod or something like that to have it standing up not really a big deal to sort out for the accessories of course we have the alternate pilot figure which will fit inside there but if you were using this without the armor if you were just using it as the frame this is the part uh, that she will fit onto here like this there like so and then that is the replacement part for this big massive chunk of armor which is like the main part of the body is just this kind of simple thing here instead you do also have the original hands which are the original hands part of the frame so if you didn't like these like kind of like gloved or larger hands and you wanted to use just these uh, simple hands which are the ones that were originally on the frame you can use those instead and then the same thing for the feet as well these are the parts that are originally the front of the feet but they're replaced with these parts there with have the, which have a little uh, spike on there which is pretty cool so but, but if you wanted something more simple you could use that little part instead and then you have the tactical torch which again is basically a beam saber and as we saw on the box art is meant to be like in the colors basically of like a cigarette but it has like this beam effect sticking out of there which is obviously just all molded in the same color so you have to paint that or 
if you wanted to have this just like stowed to somewhere on the kit, you can just cut that off, remove that, and just paint this and just like stick it somewhere. I don't know where it's supposed to go, but you could just stick it somewhere around there so it looks like it's just stored on there. And then we have the rifle as well with a dedicated hand, like trigger finger hand for holding onto the rifle. So it's again, pretty cool design. No seam lines or anything on this, it's just one piece. It's got a lot of nice detail on there, uh, but obviously you kind of need some paint or at least some paneling on there to make it look its best. And the whole kit in general, I think like because of the design, it, I mean, this is all, it's pretty much almost entirely color accurate just as it is because it's just a very monochrome design just being the one color mostly so I mean if you just wanted to just do a little panel lining on this some matte coat on it and I mean it'd be pretty close to being like what you see on the box art basically and real quick just to give you guys an idea of the size of this here it is compared to a also 135th scale machine and Krieger kit there so you can see uh, you know they look it to be in scale but you can get an idea of how much larger these are compared to the uh, suits from Machine and Krieger. And then compared to your typical HD 144 scale Gundam kit, you can see just how small these kits are. They're pretty small. So there you have it guys. It's a pretty awesome little kit, I gotta say. Uh, for a design that I wasn't sure I was gonna be totally into going into it, I mean, I thought it was a pretty interesting concept and it looked pretty cool. I wasn't totally sold on the design. After building this, I'm really looking forward to building some more of them in the line. Um, now, just going back to whether the kit is really worth the price tag on it, I feel like these kits are not really that expensive. They're about it's $25, I think, somewhere around there. Uh, they vary depending on the design. Some of the ones that are coming out towards the end of the year are a little bit more expensive or a little bit cheaper based on like how much is included in the kit. But obviously if you compare that to Gunpla and you consider you could get like an RG or like a bigger HG or like a smaller or older master grade for around the same price, yeah, in comparison it doesn't really seem very worth it. But if you wanted something cool and unique like this, considering also that it's from a very small company, Good Smile Company, is pretty small and it's also of a licensed property and it's a pretty nicely detailed kit and does come with a couple of water slides in there as well. All things considered, I think the price tag for this is not too bad. And if this is something that you're interested, I would definitely recommend just picking up one of them, uh, you know, choose one of the ones, one of the two that's already come out or one of the four that are coming out uh, towards the end of the year. So there's some cool designs to choose from, some different kind of cool themed designs. So uh, check them out if you're interested, guys. If not, then I would say, you know, just save your money for something else, maybe more exciting to you. That's not something that I would say is for everyone, but it's definitely something that you could do some cool stuff with. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support, commenting, liking, subscribing, all of that. Really appreciate it. And of course, thank you to USA Gundam Store as well for their support as always. So check the link down below to USA Gundam Store. Use my coupon code there. Zacharelius10, save 10% off everything there on the site. Enjoy building and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.